In this tutorial, we're going to be moving this website on this local server to this domain name that is actually running live on um, our hosting package. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to export the database. So to do that, I'm just going to come to ZAMP and I'm going to click on admin for this my SQL module. So we're going to select the database that we want to export. In my own case, I'm going to export this tutorial database. So I'm going to click on it. And now I can click on export and all the tables under this database are going to be exported. So we're just going to scroll down and I'm going to just export. I'm going to click on this export button and I'm going to save the file, the SQL file. And now I'm going to open this SQL file with Notepad. You can also use Notepad++, anyone you have. And now what I want to do here is to come to edit, select um, replace, and I'm going to replace local hosts with the domain name that you want to use for these websites. So in my own case, I'm using this subdomain test.coincent.com.ng and I'm going, to, I'm going to click on replace all. So all the local hosts has been replaced with this domain name. So let's close this and let's click on, um, let's press Ctrl S to save these changes and let's close this. Now what I want to do next is to create a database, create a database user and link the user to the database. Now to do that, we're going to log into the cPanel of the hosting which we just bought. So we're inside our cPanel, I'm just going to search for database and I'm going to click on this my SQL databases. Now here we're going to give our database a name. We're going to be using tutorial and I'm going to click on create database. So the database has been created. We need to click on go back and now we're going to create a new database user. Now I'm going to scroll down on the same page and here we can see add a new user. Under this, up, under this section, I'm going to put in the same name as the database. You can use anything you like. And I'm going to write a strong password. And remember to um, note down all these things that you're typing here because we're going to need it later on in the course of this tutorial. So I'm just going to put in my password again for confirmation. All right. And I'm going to click on create user. Now I'm also going to click on go back. And finally, on this page, we're going to link the database and the users together. Now we're going to scroll down to this side, um, to this section that says add user to database. And I'm going to click on the database we just created. And also, okay, I'm going to click on the user we just created and also the database we just created. All right, and I'm going to click on add. I'm going to select all privileges. I'm going to click all privileges and we're going to scroll down to select make changes. So the next thing we're going to be doing now is to come to this search bar and now we're going to search for PHP my admin. So we're going to select PHP my admin and if you remember the other time we exported our database. Now is the time for us to import the, the database to our live server. So what we're going to do now is to come to the database we just created which is CoinSense tutorial and um, what we're going to do now is to click on imports. So here we're going to choose the file. So I'm going to come to my downloads and I'm going to select this um, SQL file. We're going to scroll down to select these imports. So everything has been imported successfully. Now we can close this page. So the next thing we're going to do now is to search for file manager. And now we're going to import our WordPress files, the websites we built offline. We're going to import it to our live server. So what we're going to do now is to scroll down to pick the domain name which we want to use. Um, in my own case, I'm going to be using this subdomain and let's come back to our XAMPP directory. So I'm going to come to XAMPP and here we're going to come to htdocs and we're going to open WordPress. Now what you're going to do now is to select everything. I'm going to remove this zip file. So we're going to select all the WordPress files there. This is the website we've built offline. We're going to right click and we're going to select add to archive. I'm going to use zip formats. So we're going to click on OK, but I'm actually not going to zip this file again. I already have it here, which is this WordPress file. So I'm going to cancel this. Now what we're going to do now is to come back to our browser and we're going to select upload. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to drag this WordPress zip file to this box. I'm going to wait for it to get to 100 and we're also going to wait for the bar to turn to green. So the upload is successful and now we have the WordPress zip file here. In case you can't find this zip file, you can just click on reload. Now I'm just going to extract this file. So we're going to extract it to the main directory. All right. So I'm going to close this box and here we have it. So we can also decide to delete this since we don't need it anymore. All right. So by the time we come back to our web, web website, so I'm going to actually type in the domain name right now. 
we're going to come up with an error that says error connecting error establishing a, a database connection or something like that all right so it says error establishing a database connection and to fix this we just need to edit our wp config file and link our database to this website so to do that we're going to come back to file manager and under the wp config you remember i was telling you earlier when you were creating your database that you should make sure you remember all the um, information you used now we're going to right click on wp config and we're going to click on edit so now what we need to do is to just change the database name add the, the database user and also add the database password so right here i'm just going to add consent underscore tutorial and we have the same name for our database user also so you have to make sure everything is correct because any slight changes any slight mistake here is still going to give you the database error now we're going to put in the password you created that time also and now we're going to click on save changes all right so the changes has been saved now we need to come back to the domain name and we're going to refresh this page so the website is live on our server right now so um actually you might have some errors you might face some errors for example let's say when you want to log in into the admin area you might face some 404 error and actually this is very simple and i think the error actually came from the way i built the website on my local server so in case you made this type of mistake or you encounter this error let me show you how you can fix this easily so we're going to come to cpanel and we're going to select this wordpress manager you can just search for wordpress manager in this search bar so we're going to select wordpress manager by softacolos so what we're going to do on this page is to first select scan so we can scan for manual installations of wordpress which we just did so we're going to click on scan um start scanning for installations okay so it has found the installation we just did we're going to click on return to wordpress management and we're just going to scroll down to the bottom so here is the domain name what we need to do is to open this to to click on this arrow to open this um, information and now we're just going to remove this extra text we have here and we're going to click on save site info so first of all we're just going to refresh this page all right so let's do one thing here let's try to access our wp admin again so i'm just going to type in the old stuff or slash wp admin and we shouldn't have this error anymore so as you can see the error has disappeared now you can just log in with all the details you used earlier on so i'm just going to try that right now all right so um i'm actually seeing this error because of my hosting and because the password i used is um a low quality password so i can just reset the password but then if you add if you have used a strong password earlier you will be able to log in immediately to your wordpress admin area so this is how you can move your website from a local server to a live server um, for free. And within a few minutes, you are ready to put your website live on the internet. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like this video. Comments for anything I might have missed out or for any video suggestion or for anything that is just on your mind. And also don't forget to subscribe for more contents like this. And also share this with your friends that might actually need this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.